the drainage system in India. Now, in India, we can demarcate the drainage system as either the Arabian Sea drainage or the Bay of Bengal drainage. Now, if I say Arabian Sea versus Bay of Bengal, I would say 77% of the drainage falls in the Bay of Bengal, only 23% falls in Arabian Sea. The rivers draining into Arabian Sea are Narbda, Mahi, Tapti, Periyar. However, in the regions of Bay of Bengal, you have rivers like Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri. So all those rivers, Ganga from the north, Brahmaputra, all those flow into Bay of Bengal. So that is one demarcation. Now how they are demarcated? They are demarcated by the hills. So it could be the Delhi uh, hills, then it could be Aravlis, it could be Siadris. So all of those are the hilly ranges that divide the rivers flowing into the Arabian Sea and the rivers flowing into Bay of Bengal. The next demarcation is the Himalayan rivers, that's the rivers of North India and the rivers of South India broadly we can say. So Himalayan drainage and the peninsular drainage. Now in the Himalayan drainage, the rivers are perennial. They are throughout the year fed up, fed by the glaciers. So you have melting of the glaciers and water flowing into the rivers throughout the year. Also, you have a antecedent and a consequent, uh, consequent uh, drainage system that is seen in the Himalayan rivers in contrast to a peninsular rivers where you have mainly the superimposed drainage system. Now, antecedent and superimposed we have covered in a separate lecture. You can follow the links in the description. The next is the flow of river. Now in the north you have longer flow of river that is seen, a lot of meandering that is seen in contrast to the southern rivers or the peninsular rivers where the course of movement is short and it's well adjusted across the valleys that is seen. There is comparatively less meandering of the rivers that is seen. In the north, as the river is long, definitely the basin area would be long. So larger basin, more youthful activity and more active levels of rivers are seen in the north. Now in the north, let's say you have Ganga. Now Ganga, you have tributaries like uh, Yamna, Son, uh, then you have uh, Gandak. So all those tributaries join with the main Ganga. Now, since there are one main river, and other subordinate rivers joining in, we understand watershed. So watershed can be classified under three heads, macro, meso and micro. Macro is the most biggest one where you have an area of 20,000 square kilometers or more. Meso from 2000 to 20,000 and less than 2000 is what is micro regions. So micro talks about the region where you have very less rainfall, small accumulation of water that is seen through the rivers. Mizu watershed is a watershed of let's say the Kalindi river, Periyar river where you have a Mizu watershed that is seen and macro where you have the 14 major rivers that we classify Ganga, Brahmaputra, Krishna, Tapi, uh, Narda, Mahi. So those are the major rivers with macro watershed. So that's a very basic classification.